YouTube, Harvey uh, Talks Prison, HTP, and today I want to do a video on uh, Adam, he gave me the suggestion from Australia, he wanted to know about who was my worst selling, and that's a tough one, so if you're new here, subscribe, you know, if you like the prison content, that's what we do here. And I also, if you have any suggestions for videos, what you want me to talk about, let me know. I know some of you guys have suggested and I've forgotten. Some of them, some of them I remember, like the cooking one. It's going to have to wait until we're done with everything. But anyway, let's get into this uh, worst Sally. I really can't. Place a finger on who was my worst selling. I can probably tell you who my best selling was, and that's Kevin Hoppy. I had other good sellies like Bird. Um, it's been several of them that's been good sellies, but the worst one, it depends on the situation. I had one selling that when he first moved in, he went up and took a, you know, worked out and everything, came back. Everybody comes back and they Race for the showers, you know, try to be the first one in there, otherwise you got to stand in the line, there's nine showers, regular showers, plus a handicap showers, and they'll let you use the handicap shower if you no know, handicapped people are using it. So, ten showers, and everybody showers quickly. We had 30 minutes to shower, and uh, he didn't grab his shower stuff or anything, he just... Came in all hot and sweaty and laid on his bunk. I said, dude, you gotta take a shower. Well, he threw a fit and it was so much so, we were allowed to have our doors open, you know, when we first came back to the rent to the showers and stuff. Other people came over and they told him he had to get in the shower too and, and if need be, he would be forced in the shower. So he finally got in the shower and after that, I didn't have no problems with him, but for like a few days, he was just complaining about it, you know. I had one celly that, well, he wasn't a celly yet, but they was going to put this guy in my cell. And just by looking at him, I, he looked like he had one of those messed up cases. And as soon as, you know, I walked to the door, because they popped the door, and when I walked to the door, he was heading for my cell. And he just stops when he sees me. And he turns around and he goes and he tells him, I'm, I'm not selling with him. I'm glad he told him that because I wouldn't have selling with him. You know, he just, he might not have had one of those cases, but there's a high chance he did. Um, now, I had one guy that, uh, he and I were workout partners. We got along fine. Out in the yard, out in the wing, we got along great. So we thought it'd be a good idea to move in. They classify everybody as alphas, kappas, or sigmas. Sigmas can only sell with sigmas and other ca and kappas. Alphas can only sell with alphas and kappas. Kappas, as you just heard, they can sell with anybody. I was a kappa. It kind of sucked because sometimes I get these lame sellies. For lack of a better term, <laughs> you know, or like the one that they was trying to put in my cell and decided not to move in. Decided he didn't want to go in there. So me and this guy, he was an alpha, I was a kappa, we got put in a cell together. I've sold with alphas before, they're real easy to 
some of them are easy to sell with, some of them are hard to sell with. You know, some of them you just click with, some of them you don't. And this was one of the ones that we didn't get. We got along outside the, the cell, but in the cell, we didn't get along. And uh, he had uh, moved into my cell. So one day we was arguing, and uh, we just stopped, you know, and said, hey, man, we got to talk this out. He goes, hey, Harv, he goes, we got, we can't sell together. We, we just ain't clicking. And uh, he said, uh, it's going to come to blows, you know. Um, he goes, since I moved into your cell, I'll be the one to move. I'll put it in a moving past the move, you know. But you had to wait three months, you know. We'd only been in it like a couple of weeks. You had, I think it was, it was either two months, 60 days, or 90 days. You had to wait to, to move again, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, it seemed like it was a long time for both of us. And uh, he moved out. I got another selling. And uh, he got into something. We got along and get fine again. He's back, you know. But the one they put in the cell with me, <laughs> he was gay. <laughs> and he, when he, <clears throat> when he, uh, you know, he came from the hole. And when they put him in the cell with me, he was just kind of, like looking at me like nervous like right and I'm thinking oh man you know and uh, he goes you ain't got a problem with this I said not for the moment but you know something's gonna have to be worked out he goes I know he goes but the thing of it is he goes I'm trying to get in a cell with a partner of mine I said that's good that, I said who's your cell you, who's your partner selling with and um, he told me, he goes, and he is trying to get out of that cell. So maybe you guys could, you know, I said, well, we'll see. And um, I said, but in time, you know, as long as you don't bring that stuff to me, I said, we'll get on fine until you, you move, you know. And that happened. I went to the hole one time, and they put this boy in and I say, boy, somebody's, you know, that he's tied with somebody. We call it being tied with somebody. You know, he has a man. But uh, apparently this is what his lifestyle and what he wanted. But, you know, to each their own. That's, that's not what aggravated me about him. What aggravated me about him is he, uh, he would, when I was doing push-ups and stuff, he'd just lay there and watch me, you know, and I told him, man, man that, that's creeping me out, don't do that, you know. And, uh, but, i tell you why I kept him in the cell. <laughs> he came to the hole, he had emptied his pillow, back then we were allowed to take our pillows to the hole, they don't do that no more. He had emptied the inside of his pillow out, you know, took all the inside of it out and filled it up with tobacco. And came to the hole, and uh, he told me I could smoke as much as I wanted. And he was selling that stuff, so I was smoking good in the hole. But he had it; they didn't know. And in the very middle, he had a lighter and, and papers. Oh, we smoking good up in there, you know. Uh, but I told him, I said, "Don't be watching me while I work out. I mean, kind of keep your uh, hands off of me, you know. <laughs> Don't want you touching me." And uh, the thing about it was, is whenever somebody wanted to buy tobacco from him, they'd holler at me. He, he could be at the door. And they'd say, hey, get your cell. Get Harvey. And uh, so he'd, hey, they're one, you're one at the door. And so I'd go to the door and, hey, your cell got any more tobacco to sell? They wouldn't talk to him. They would talk to me. I, it's kind of messed up, you know, um, but that's just the way it was, you know, as people didn't like uh, dealing with 
boys, you know, if they, unless they had to. But I'm trying to think of one that was worse than any of these I've mentioned, and uh, I really can't, you know. Um, oh, I had a Sally that, a good dude, <laughs> we got along pretty good, you know, he didn't have a TV. He, I made a video about this. Robert Schneider, he didn't have a TV, and he was saving up every, almost every little bit he had for uh, a TV, so he could buy him a TV. So I made him watch my TV, and he was making these cards and selling them. You know, I was trying to get him business. He'd sell the cards for some coffee or whatever, you know. He didn't smoke. So really all he needed was coffee, maybe a little bit of food, you know. And so I was very impressed with that, you know. He'd... He made $20 a month in the kitchen, and he'd save almost all of it. The TVs were 145 so, you know, it took him a few months to do that. But the bad thing about him was he had bad gas. I mean, it was not, and it was all the time. It wasn't just like, when I say bad, it's hard to put put into words how bad it was. And I told him one day, you need to go to medical about this. There's, <laughs> there's something wrong, you know. So he, he did. He go, he went to medical, and, and they gave him uh, some type of pills to take. And, uh, I mean, it helped a little bit, but not a whole lot. But uh, he was... Uh, he was messed in. I had this Sully at the walls. And uh, this was a good dude. You know, he's an old convict. He's a good dude. But uh, he, uh, there was nothing bad about him, but he was just kind of, the only thing hard about him was that he had a code that he went by and he did not stray from it one bit. And, uh, I mean, he'd tell you like it is, you know, and, uh, he's seen somebody, nowadays, you know, you see everybody talking in prison, there was a lot of people that Jeff, with the, the COs, oh, he, he would set them out. That's the type of person he was. He didn't talk to the COs unless he absolutely had to, and then he made sure there was another convict there. They overhear the conversation. Uh, that's type of person he was but uh, he tells me one day he catches me I, I spaced out you know I hadn't been in prison very long and I was spaced out and uh, he goes hey young man Sully don't be doing that I said doing what he goes don't be don't ever space out like you just did in prison always be aware of your surroundings I know we're locked in the cell always be aware and he goes, you know, you never know. Always be on your guard. And uh, he goes, what, what was he tripping on anyway? You know, what, what's on your mind? And I told him, I said, well, I see all this violence out here. And it seems like everybody's uh, getting stabbed and killed and uh, life flighted out of here by helicopters. He goes, yeah, so, this is the way he talked. <laughs> and uh, I said, it's only a matter of time before it's one of us. He goes, well, it's, all, it's already been me a couple times. He goes, uh, I said, I got a life sentence. Um, I'm going to die in here. He goes, maybe. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, maybe. But at least you'll die a man, not a punk. He goes, now, let's smoke this and stop talking about this nonsense. He had a joint there. Uh, so we smoked it, you know. As we're getting done smoking it, I said, I think I'm going to need a knife. And he goes, just nods, he said, I'll get you one. <laughs> 
not a bad dude. He's just, you had to understand where he was at and how he thought about things and viewed things, you know. But uh, I think most of the sellies I've had that I didn't get along with were uh, alphas, you know, and, and sometimes kappas. You know, we just clashed, you know. Like I said, even if we might get along outside the cell in the yard or something, it doesn't mean we're going to get along in the cell, you know. So anyway, that's all I got for you today. Maybe next time I do one on good sellies, best sellies, but I've already mentioned those, so I don't know. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.